How deep is your love? Hello! Guess who it is? It's Ramesh Ranganathan. No, it's not! It's not! He's lovely, but it's not him. Sorry, that sound of cutlery there was uh, Nathan's grabbing his gin and moving a fork. So here's how professional a drinker my producer is. He's put a wee tea towel like folded three times down on the coffee table so that his gin doesn't make a noise as he moves it up and down between his lips. And what am I drinking, Nathan? Water. Water. That's right. <laughs> um, what are we talking about today? Do you know what we're talking about today? Make the make the sound of the animal first. Let's let the listeners guess. Moo. <laughs> the campest cow I've ever seen. But if you knew Nathan, that's quite manly for him. Um. Yes, that's my glass. Cows, beef. Now here's the thing, Nathan. What do you call the meat? from a pig what what do you call the meat from a sheep mutton clever boy <laughs> what do you call the meat from a cow beef what do you call the meat from a chicken chicken why <laughs> the rest of all got synonyms but not th- anyway I have no beef with you beloved listener now for those who don't know that's hip hop speak a beef is well beef is of all the meats the it holds a unique place in my life because you know that way that sunday when you were a kid you'd wake up a bit late and all that and you'd be wandering around the house about that smell in the house of beautiful roast beef a big joint of beef in the oven you know that smell that unique smell i have no idea what that smell is my mum's never cooked beef in her entire life i've never had meat beef in my mum's house I've had plenty of beef here no oxtail no beef no veal my mum it's a Sikh thing Sikhs because Sikhs are said to have come from Hindus right so as some people think we're a sect of Hinduism we're not we're a completely different religion but you will find Hindus and Sikhs in the same family so in certain parts of the Punjab uh, you'll find the firstborn boy child is a Sikh and the others are Hindus very closely linked. Half my family are Hindu. Um, Hindus are very anti-beef, which I find curious because I mean, you know, they're delicious. The theory behind not eating cows is because cows give us milk like our mothers. But then, so do goats. But you know, there isn't a and the, and the other thing that's quite weird is there isn't a Hindu god that's shaped like a cow that has a cow's. Like, there's the monkey god, right? Hanuman, who's kind of a cross between a chimpanzee and, and Bruce Willis. Without the vest, obviously. I made that joke in a piece I wrote for The Guardian, and they took it out. So, uh, beef. I get, Obviously, it came to it late in life. and My first experience of beef, funny enough, can you remember what your first experience of beef was, Nathan Sparling? Can you? Boiled beef. Really? Very <laughs> Scottish, very yeah. Scottish. Yes, here's a lovely bit of meat. What should we do with it? Let's boil the flavour out. Ha ho! Have you got cabbage? Yes. What should we do with that? Boil the flavour. Ha ho! Um, so my first experience of beef was beef flavoured crisps at school, and weirdly, my mum and dad weren't at school with me, right? Yet still, I went to hide in the wee corner of a hut to eat them. Um, and they taste—they don't really taste. If you've had beef. You can understand why that's beef flavoured. If that's your first experience of beef. So I remember when we were kids, I mean, it's not anything I'm proud of, but in the 70s when McDonald's came to the UK, we went out to London. My dad was like, I'll go get my kids the new fad. Right? I mean, and McDonald's was a different company then. I mean, I've had one McDonald's in the last 30 years. Do you know that? And it was in Brooklyn. I was very drunk. And I thought I should give it, I should give it another try because a lot of people eat mcdonald's and am i just being a food snob two bites it was in the bin i went around the corner for a burger king <laughs> i'm joking now um so beef burgers uh were a thing so at school when they served beef burgers me and my brother had an extra 
ice cream scoop of mash and an extra spoonful of beans. There was no accommodation made for us not eating beef. I mean, really, as you can imagine, there's no word in, in Glaswegian for vegetarian. Well, there is, but it begins with C. Um, so it just was, you know, anyway. So as, so as I got older and I kind of... And so if you've not tried something, you're less inclined to want to try something, if that makes sense. But again, beef is a, a word laden with baggage. I mean, the French call the English le rose beef. Yeah. So it's disparaging. I don't know how being roast beef can be disparaging because it's delicious. You know, and so, and, and again, the, the beef dishes you will find are Muslim beef dishes. And I contend the Muslims do the best food in the world because they do Punjabi food, which is the best, and they put that Muslim twist on it. So uh, the recipe this week, uh, I was actually oscillating between a beef rogan josh and a beef bunna. Um, and I think I'm going to go with the beef rogan josh. And I'll tell you for why. Uh, because I think the the bun is perhaps a bit well, better known and, and more experienced. And the Rogan Josh, so Rogan is actually red, the colour red. So Rogan Josh is a red curry and quite often uh, in the kind of the British or the Scottish Indian restaurants that's delivered as much through a colouring as through a flavouring. But if you use a Kashmiri chilli powder, you get that redness. Smoked paprika, you get the redness. And then also, I've been um, known to, to you know, sort of scorch some red peppers. Because I think beef can take that sweetness because it's got a sweetness, but not like lamb. It's a different sort of sweetness. It's a, it's a more, it's less obvious, more left field sweetness, if you know what I mean. Uh, plus, beef's just delicious, isn't it? Um, I, do a lot, I do a lot of I do oxtail. Oxtail curry. We might do a special one on oxtail. I actually do a lot of different oxtail things. Um... I always remember her name was Madeline. She was meant to show up for dinner 2008, just a, just the new year of 2008. Can you do the Simon Bates music in the background? Do 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 do, the art tune. Do 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 do. So true story. I mean, she was everything you would want a woman to be if you're a straight man. So, I mean, when I say super bright, I mean, you know. All the women in my life are clever. They, you know, they have to be. You know, you super bright. This woman was so bright, funny, beautiful, so beautiful. Kind of, kind of copper red hair, but very fine. Just and the whitest girl you've ever seen. Uh, so I, I cooked her a braised oxtail, oxtail braised in um, red wine vinegar. Um, a Riesling actually interesting I went for this, the, the white wine option on that a little bit of veal stock uh, served with a saffron mash I know, how poncy uh, and just some lovely green veg and I've it's the only time in my life I've watched a candle burn down to the candelabra and just watched the food listening on repeat to the first Bon Iver album which is not an album filled with optimism, it has to be said. Um, Forever Emma, years ago, I think is what it's called. It's got Skinny Love on it. It's a great album. We'll put it on the put it on the playlist. So, um, yeah, I love Oxus. So we'll do that. So the thing about a beef, uh, Rogan Josh, is it's the color. The color is important, and, and where the color comes from is very important. So quite often, I, I'll talk about using chilies. The color of the chilies doesn't matter unless it does. Use your red chilies. I also think um, using uh, red peppers as well is really nice in this. I don't always blitz them down. Sometimes I just scorch them, skin them, and put them in. Because you don't necessarily want that smoky flavour in a Rogan Josh, but you want that the, kind of red sweetness of the, the red peppers. That's very much my own thing. Um, the Kashmir chilies, And again, it's, it's, it's the build-up from the bottom, the classic base, which for those of you who have uh, signed up to the the beginners course will be, you know, be learning about the aromatics, the seasoning. Now with beef, um, the best whole spices to use, because again, my beginners will know about the demarcation between the whole spice and the ground spices. So in my oil, um, I'm using some cumin, but star anise. 
I love star anise and I love peppercorns with beef. It's just a beautiful combination. I suppose star anise is more traditionally used with pork and it does, it works amazingly with pork and I actually use it in my pork vindaloo so for those of you that were um, with us for the pork vindaloo cook along you know, star anise, just amazing um, it does a very different thing in a beef dish because what star anise does is it, it, it brings its potency but it has an, it's, it's the diplomat of the spice world it will work with what you've got as long as you use it in the correct amount it will work and it will find a solution to the problem. I quite like that. I just made that up there. It's quite good there, isn't it? So, um, you, you you temper your oil with your whole spices. Uh, and here's an interesting thing. I braise my Rogan Joshes. Like, I braise my bunas. Now, you need to understand why that's such a radical thing to do. In Punjab, the only use, and in India generally, the only use of, of uh, ovens are tandoori ovens. You don't have an oven at home. But because we were cooking... Actually, I'll tell you where this came from. This is really interesting. Because I was cooking at people's homes. I used to do a lot of charity dinners. People would pay for me to come. And some like, back before the credit crunch, it was ridiculous. Like 13 grand people were paying for me to come. I mean, even I know I'm not worth 13 grand. Let's be clear, I'm barely worth 1,300. But don't let that stop you signing up for the different levels on Patreon. Um, and, and you'd be using domestic cookware, which isn't designed for curries. So bear in mind, like a curry, a masala cooking in a, a pot on a heat, it's going to be there for a good hour. And you muller the pans. So what I was doing is I was doing the, the, the heavy lifting the first 10, 20 minutes and transferring into an oven where it was an indirect heat. But also it softened the meat down. And again, I'm not there just to cook. I'm there to entertain folk. That's why they pay that money for me to come along. So I'm able to take my eye off the oven and leave the kitchen, do my thing and just set a timer for the oven. So braising um, a beef rogue and Jewish really does give you another layer of complexity I think because the way that meat particularly if you're using a good marble beef like I tell you what oh, I mean again I came to beef with no preconceptions right I came with no oh it has to be fillet or it has to be silver cider or it has to you know I came loving what I loved as I tasted it and skirt skirt is delicious great for this um brisket have you any idea how delicious brisket is? Brisket is off the chain delicious on a braised... So brisket, Rogan Josh. Can you imagine? A pulled beef Rogan Josh. Why would you not want that? All over your face and your stomach. Inside as well as out. Um, so I, yeah, I think this works really well for the cheap cuts because you get all that connective tissue. You get all the tendons and all that. Cooking down, cooking down, cooking down. Um... So you need to use your red chilies for this. You need to use your Kashmir chilli powder. Smoked paprika is really good too. Even plain paprika, again, it's the colour we want more than anything. Um, and in this, I tend to use more tomato puree than passata. I won't use fresh tomatoes because fresh tomatoes actually cook. Again, peely wally is the word we have up the road. Um, it kind of, it's not red. It kind of goes a bit kind of orangey beige, which is of no use to anyone in a red dish. So I think, you know, and again, a rogan just ought to be pokey. That's why it's red, you know. And again, what was this dish before the British came? Before there were chilies in India, what was this dish? We'll never know. Do you know why? Because they haven't invented a time machine. Or have they? They probably have, and they don't know where it is. <laughs> Do you know that way you're in a multi-story car park? Where I park the car? <laughs> um, so when you're cooking this down, you, you seal the meat again. Again, you seal the meat just to, to get the cooking process going. You're adding your tomato puree, nice thick tomato puree. Um, I have been known in the past, and I wouldn't recommend this, but tomato ketchup is an oft underrated ingredient. Used a lot in Malaysian food, actually, uh, Indonesian food as well. Um, and what it does, when you're in a rush, it gives you an instant kind of range of flavour. So you get the, the acetic acid, the, the vinegar flavour. Um, uh, you get the... Uh, the sugar, obviously, the tomatoes, all, it's all going on. It's all going on. Um, but, you know, only in emergencies. So you've got this going on. It goes into the oven. Now, you have to, have to, have to cartouche, okay? You have to. Now, most of you will know what cartouche is. Some of you won't. It um, So get a bit of uh, greaseproof paper or baking powder. 
scrunch it up, wet it under the cold tap, really soak it, and then sit it down so it's 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 touching the top of every bit, and then put foil on top, yeah? Because what you don't want is you don't want the top to catch in the oven. Yeah, your fear about cooking on the hob is the bottom catches. In the oven, the top catches, okay? So keep it covered, and then just give it a turn every half an hour. And you can braise. Now, the way braising works is it's proportionality. I have braised a dish. So I braised a dish the other day for seven hours, and I amended my temperature to that effect. So anything over, I think, anything over three figures centigrade, so 100 up. Because anything below that is kind of, you're keeping warm, not cooking. 100 up to about 150, I think, are braising temperatures. I could be wrong. This is just how I do it. Um, and so if it's 150, you brace for less. 100, you brace for longer. And then you just find your way in the middle. And again, all ovens are different. I mean, I'm a professional chef. My oven is hotter at the back than it is at the front. So I spin things around halfway through the cooking process so it evens out. All of us are different. If you've got an aga, and I know many of my listeners have got agas because you're probably that kind of people, this is a perfect dish for an aga. So it goes, what I tend to do is I go hob top straight into the hottest aga, which is about your 220 aga, for an hour. Then take it out of there and put it in your, not your keep warm aga, your next one up, your one your 150 aga. Um, <laughs> look at me talking about agas. <laughs> um, so this is what we're going to be cooking along on Friday um, but again we're going to be doing um, some other dishes other beef dishes across the different channels um, on uh, Facebook I'm going to do a wee recipe for seared carpaccio of beef with a little Asian salad um, it's, it's going to be beef mental this week so uh, check in on TikTok uh, Instagram Facebook Twitter and Patreon um, yeah what do you think? I'm really happy we talk talk about beef all week. Should I do that? <gasps> Tell you what, we could do this great. We'll do pull. We'll do we'll do the we'll do a brief brisket thing somewhere. Yeah, do that. What is food? Love. What is love? Food. What is food? Love. Life. Yes. Well done. Pull that one out of the fire. Um. Thank you, lovely listener. Um. I will see you on Friday for the cook along. Um. And remember, this is about you talking to me as well as me talking to you. So get in touch on any of the platforms. You can even email if you like. There's an email address somewhere. And um, keep it real. Beef, beef. Beef.